We're going to be talking about uh, uh, hope beyond compare. Uh, for many people, Christmas is a time of peace and is a time of joy. Uh, for Taryn and I, we were able to spend time with family, which uh, we just counted ourselves so blessed and so thankful that uh, we were able to do that. And, and uh, we're not done yet. Because, uh, Harold, did I tell you that we've been on vacation for a week and we have another week to go? I'll tell you what, that's like two weeks of Christmas, right? And uh, so uh, we're thankful some more family get-togethers here in the next week. And, and so we have been able to experience some joy as we catch up with our loved ones. We have been able to experience a lot of peace. Uh, for some of you, a power outage, uh, there really was a lot of peace, wasn't there? Uh, boy, no TVs, no music, no nothing. And I heard one boy in the, in the store, he was talking to the, his, his friend there, and he said, you know, haven't had any power for three days. But then he said, you know what, it really hasn't been that bad. And his friend says, what in the world are you talking about? He's like, well, um, I couldn't go anywhere because my car is in the garage, and the, the thing you pull on, the emergency, it's busted. So I said they couldn't go anywhere for a while. It says I didn't have TV, I didn't have this. It said I had a flashlight for a while, but eventually it died out. He said, you know what, it was just me and my thoughts. And he says, boy, I was able to pray an awful lot. Sometimes that's what it takes for God to get our attention, I think. He said he was able to experience just, you know, living life and thanking God. Sometimes we need to do that. So we were able to experience some peace and some joy and, and some happiness over our, uh, over our time at Christmas, but it certainly is not like that for everyone. And you know, uh, we say Merry Christmas, it's not merry for all. For some it is filled with pain, for some it is filled with regret. It is a sad time without joy. There is no peace present, and hope is the last thing on their mind. And so keeping that as a backdrop, I'd like us to look into Romans uh, chapter 15. If you want to turn with me there. Romans chapter 15. I'm going to start in verse 7 and read through 13. It says this, Therefore welcome one another, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. And then in verse 13 it says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Hope is something that sadly is missing from the lives of many people. Have you ever thought that your life was like a rat race? It was just like a free-for-all. You know what? I've been there and, and where I work, I work at Calhoun County Medical Care and we get so many people that come in and they're wanting to go that way, and they're headed that way because the place is just kind of laid out, just kind of weird. And sometimes I will look at them and I will say, welcome to the rat race. You know what? You feel like a rat in a maze in there because it can be very easy to get lost. You know what? Sometimes in life it can be very easy to lose our way and to get lost. And you know what? When you get lost, you have no hope. How many of y'all remember the days before GPS? Remember that? Okay. I can remember taking trips and I'd have my map printed out on a piece of paper. <laughs> my problem, I can never remember where I put 
that piece of paper. Okay? So I thought, hey, getting this GPS, man, this is going to be a great thing. I will never be lost ever, ever again. Well, come to find out, GPSs, they need to be updated from time to time. I didn't know that. So here a few years ago, uh, Karen and I were on our way on a trip, and I am spending so, I'm driving, right? And I'm spending so much time looking at this GPS over there, I am doing whatever it tells me. Turn left, okay. Turn right, sure. Okay, well, it had me turning right where there was no road. And I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, it says turn right, and Karen's going, ah, 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 what you doing? And I looked up, I said, oh, the GPS is wrong. Guess what? Um, sometimes our lives are like that, and we find ourselves without hope. And finding ourselves without hope is a dangerous place to be. And at Christmas, we tend to make it so complicated, don't we? We tend to make it just so, I'm going to use the word unrealistic. Now, I love to decorate. I do. I put up the tree this year. You know, Karen only had to move a few ornaments around. That was all right. I love to do all kinds of stuff like that. But sometimes we get so busy doing good things that we find ourselves lost. How many of y'all went out shopping the day before Christmas? Oh, Robert, thank you for being honest, Scott. I see that, Ann. You know what? Um, it can be so easy to get caught up in that. Endless lines, right? Um, it took a whole day. It just about. We tend to fill our lives with so many things. And we're going back and forth, back and forth, and we forget that uh, Christ came to give us hope. He came to give us peace, a relationship with him. He came to bring us joy. Too many of us live a life that is joyless, a life that is devoid of any supernatural delight in the person of God, in the purpose of God, in the people of God, because we are so busy doing our own things. I want us to focus on hope this morning because without hope, we would all perish. Without hope, we would not be here. Life would not be worth living if we did not have hope for tomorrow. There was a science experiment that was conducted a long time ago, and they had taken, they had taken these rats. Maybe they were the ones, Paul, from the rat race. I don't know. But they had taken these rats, and they put them in, they put them in this tank of water to see how long they would just be able to keep going. And after about 17 minutes, you know what? The rats gave up hope, and they drowned. So they put the next batch in there, but after about 15 minutes, they pulled out the rats, and they let them rest for a few days. And they fed them, and they took care of them, and they pet them. I don't pet rats, but they did. They took good care of them. They put them back in there, they repeated it, they took them out again, and, and they did that several times. After about the fourth or fifth time, do you know those rats hung on for 36 hours? And the only thing they could say was, they were living for something. And you know, we have stories of hope as well, don't we? We can see that all throughout our history as well. We hang on, we hang on, we know there's hope for tomorrow. You know what? Jesus came to give us hope for tomorrow and for all of our tomorrows. But guess what? He came to let you know there is hope for you right now, today. And sometimes we lose sight of hope. Where is your hope found? Romans chapter 15. Verse 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. There's a couple of things that comes to mind. A short verse, it's packed with a lot. Jesus is the focus of real hope. Hope comes from him. 
We also saw there the root of Jesse will spring up. Who is that? It's Jesus. He was a descendant of Jesse, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. The focus of hope for Jews and non-Jews is Jesus. The hope for the world today is not found in the almighty dollar. It is found in Jesus Christ. I hate to say it, but do you know there will be no lasting peace on earth until Christ comes back? You want real peace? <laughs> That's when it happens. Guess what? There's hope. Jesus cares for you. He cares for you tomorrow. He cares for you today. Jesus is the source of hope. There's a song that says, looking for love in all the wrong places. Guess what? We look for hope in all of the wrong places. Because if we are going to put our hope in things of earth, they will fade away. Yep. I had a house fire. I had a house one day, and the next day I didn't. Things can change, can't they? You know what? For so many of us, we had a job one day. We had a steady income. And the next day, we didn't have that. So joy isn't found in our possessions. It's not found in our paycheck. You know what? I'm going to say this. It's not even found in those that we love and in our families. And, and hear me when I say this, I love my family, okay? And you love your family. But true hope does not come from your family. True hope comes from the one who gave you your family, that being Jesus Christ. And that hope is for all, regardless of race, culture, status. Hope is found in Jesus Christ. We have that hymn that says, my hope is built on nothing less, we sang it this morning, than what? Jesus' blood and righteousness. I like that. And when I was in college, it went, my hope is built on nothing less than Ryrie Notes and Scripture Press. Okay? And so if we are putting our faith and trust in those things other than Jesus' blood and righteousness, we have lost all hope, and we have, we have a problem, don't we? Hope is for all. Jesus gives a hope that lasts for eternity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says this, If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most pitied. Verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, amen? And the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Paul goes on to say, because Christ has been raised, we have the assurance, we have the hope that we will be with him. That is the promise that we have in God's word. If Jesus had died and had stayed dead, you know what? The disciples would have been judged as lunatics and liars, and we would have absolutely no reason to be here. Our hope is found in the fact that we serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. He is here today. He is in your home today. That is where our hope comes from. He is the focus of that. We also know that in verse 13 it says this, God himself is the source of real hope. Verse 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Paul calls God the God of hope. One of his characteristics, it's part of who he is. He is a God full of hope. He is the author and builder of the hope that we have in Christ. God has given us hope through the birth of his son. But let me say this also. You know what? I think for Christians, Christmas is the second most wonderful time of the year. Because I think Easter, <laughs> for me, he came to fulfill a mission to seek and to save those who are lost. How did he do it? He gave us hope. He died on a cross. He didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead, 
and right now is seated at the right hand of the Father. Man, that is hope. God is the source of hope. God knows what will happen. He knows that his plan of salvation was started a long time ago and was brought to this place and this time. When you think of the fact that God, in his wisdom, could have started all over again and said, humanity 2.0, we're going to start all over again. When you stop to consider that God didn't do that, did he? He never gave up on his creation, did he? He provided hope. And when we stop to think about that, we can have peace because of that. We can have joy because of that. He is the God of hope as well. He is the source of all of them. God offers us hope. Thirdly, God's spirit is the supplier of real hope. Jesus is the focus of our hope. God is the source of our hope, and his spirit is the supplier of this hope. Verse 13 again, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our experience of hope is not based on future things, but it's based on what God has given to us today. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit of God? You know what, the Spirit has, has many functions, doesn't he? He convicts the world, sin, righteousness, judgment. He teaches us. To grow closer to him. I'm thankful for the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it is the spirit that brings us joy and peace. And allows us to live that way. This life is a life that reflects God's character. Last year. One of my rallying cries in my personal devotion was this, Lord, make me more like you. And you know what? That's not a bad thing to have any day of the week. Okay? Lord, make me more like you. Paul, as I'm becoming more like Christ, and uh, as you are becoming more Christ-like, Karen, for you, Brad, way back there, for you, Robert, up there in that moving van, this is for you as well. As we become more like Christ, and we become more conformed to him and to what his desires are for us, as he impresses that on us, guess what? We get to live that out. And we get to show others what the love of God really is. It reflects God's character. Why do we do that? So that God will get the honor and the glory. It is God's spirit that is the supplier of real hope. In Romans 5, 2, Paul says, not only can we stand before God's glory face to face without fear, we also display God's glory because we have his spirit living within us. This is the hope that is present here and now. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are what? 
become new. What is it that brings that newness? We have the Holy Spirit of God that has taken up residence within us. We have the Holy Spirit of God who is there. So once he is there, we need to realize that if we are going to have a relationship with God, all, all of a sudden it's not Tim who calls the shots for Tim, but it's the Holy Spirit living inside of me that calls the shots for Tim. It calls the shots for Margie. <laughs> it calls the shots for Scott. Because our relationship this way is all because of the Holy Spirit being in us and living that out day by day. This is the hope that we have in the present, the here, and the now. My prayer is this, is that you have that hope. That you're a child of God. There's a song that says, High as a mountain, deep as an ocean, is my Father's love and devotion to all his children. Hallelujah! I'm one of his. I pray you all can sing that song. We need to find that song. It's a good one. I pray that you can sing that. That your hope is found in your relationship with Jesus Christ, what Christ has done for you. We look at Christmas. We look at this time of the year and the gifts of peace and joy and hope. They are all beyond compare, but yet they are all ours for the taking because Christ has already given them to us. You don't have to look under a tree to find it. You know what, there was one year, uh, I think it was last year, I think it was March or April, Karen came out with a present and said, I don't know where this was, but it was in the closet and it was supposed to be under the tree back in December. You know what? God doesn't hide his gifts and then say, oh, here, by the way, uh, this stuff is for here, for now, today. And God gives them to you. I pray that you are found living with those gifts of peace, joy, and hope, not just for Christmas, but for uh, the other 364 days that we find in the year. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. Lord, for that hope that we have, Father, may our focus be on the hope that you give to us. You are the one who gives real hope. You are the source of that hope. Father, we also know that it is your spirit that supplies that to us. Father, may we be found, Lord, to be recipients of that hope that gift that you have given to us. And Father, the peace and the joy and the hope that we've talked about the last three weeks, Father, those are gifts that we can share with others. How dare we be silent for the great gift that you have given. And Father, in a day and age where we talk about getting the biggest and best thing for Christmas, I pray that our zeal would be the same, that it would be even more as we talk about what you have done for us. Our hope is found in you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.